Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And we're continuing our series on Lion Server and today we're going to talk about iCal Server. Now iCal Server allows you to set up a server that shares calendars across your network where your server is the source of all of those calendars uploading to different devices and things like that. Now because server software is also used in a corporate environment, usually what happens is in a corporate environment you have a centralized server that passes your data back and forth that you communicate with, you have access to all kinds of resources and things on that server. Uh, Lion Server for Home lets you do the same thing. Now the obvious question that comes up is should I use this or should I use iCloud? And uh, a lot of times iCloud is an easier thing to use just because it's always on, it's always working, Apple's working on it. Uh, you can still run this uh, iCal server from home, still works great. A uh, couple of things to remember though, first off, you got to remember that your server has to be up. So whenever your server goes down, then you lose contact with your calendars. And so you want to have a server that's uh, up and running uh, all the time. And then the other thing is, is you want to decide whether you want to do individual accounts or whether you just want to do a shared family uh, calendar. And so we'll talk about how you can do that as well. But if you look at the server app here, you can see that uh, the interface here is pretty simple, uh, just like a lot of the other things here in Lion Server. You'll notice that uh, there's no green dot next to the iCal on the side over here, and that's because I haven't switched the service on. And you'll notice there's just two things that we can configure within this service. We have the settings for email addresses, and we have location and resources. Okay, first now, let's take a look at uh, this whole idea of allowing invitations using email addresses. Now, what this does is this allows you to send out email invitations to people when you set up events. So, for instance, uh, if you've ever worked in a corporate environment and someone has invited you to an event, you get an email that says, here's the event details. Do you want to accept? Do you want to decline? Or is it maybe? Uh, if you accept, it automatically adds it to your, um, your calendar. Uh, decline sends them a message saying, I can't make it. And you can go back and forth determining what you're going to do. Well, iCal Server has the same service built in. Now, we're going to take a look at how this works to edit this, but let me just tell you right off the bat, this is really built for uh, when you're using your own mail server. So when you're hosting your own mail on your server, uh, this is a great tool to have uh, to make iCal Server work. Uh, if if, however, you're using an outside uh, domain uh, provider who's doing your email or ISP, uh, you want to watch out on this because uh, what will happen is the server will continually ping the email address to see if there's any new invitations and that can look like someone's trying to break into your email account on the outside. So you want to be careful with, uh, with setting this thing up with anything outside. You really don't need it for the service to work. You just lose the functionality of getting an email uh, when you invite somebody. But if uh, you're within your household, you're with your family anyway, people are checking their calendars, you don't have to worry about that too much. But I'm still going to show you how to set it up for those of you that want to do it. So if you click the edit button over here, uh, what will happen is, is you can, you'll can you configure an email address that's used to notify users uh, and administrators. So it could just be any kind of email that you want to set up that lets people know, oh, okay, this is coming from the calendar server. Uh, so you can put whatever you want in there uh, to make that happen with your domain name. Obviously, it's got to be a valid uh, email address when you put it in there. So you click next, and then you go and configure your server address. So you configure the mail server type, whether it's IMAP or POP, uh, the server name, the ports, uh, username, password, all of that. And then you go and configure the outgoing server, which is again your, your outgoing server, your type, your port, all of those kinds of things. Uh, so you configure that and when you're done it just shows you all the things it's going to set up and then you would click finish and it would go ahead and set up your server for you. But since I've already got this running and set up I'm just going to click the back arrows uh, coming all the way back and cancel this and I'm going to actually turn this off because I'm not using it currently in my uh, server itself. Now. The other area we see here is locations and resources. And so uh, you're saying, well, I wonder what those are for. Well, again, in corporate environments, usually what happens is you have rooms that you need to book or uh, people want to borrow the projectors or, or whatever it is. And so on the calendar, you can reserve those things so people know that they're already checked out. Or, hey, I booked the room from 3 to 4, so nobody else can book it. It's blocked out, and it'll, re it'll return saying, hey, sorry, Joe's already got the room. So you say, well, what could I use that for in a home situation? Well, let's just add a plus button here and let's talk about this for a minute. Like we said, you have locations or resources, and let's start with a location. Uh, let's assume you've got your television in the family room, and you have certain shows that you want to watch from 8 to 10, and if you got everybody on their calendars checking this stuff out, you say, hey, I'm watching my show from 8 to 10. I don't want anybody bugging me. Nobody come in thinking you're going to change the channel or try to beat me to the television set. I want to make that happen. So what you could do is you could set up a location called family room uh, in here, 
and that would allow you to book that space and I'll show you how that works on the calendar when we get this set up. You can either accept auto invitations automatically or with delegate approval. Uh, automatically is usually the easiest way to do it so you don't have to go in there and approve it so let's just say automatically and then who's the delegate that is the one sort of in charge of all this and so I'm gonna put myself because I wanna make sure that I'm the one who's running the show on that now once I do that I click done and again the wheels gonna churn and now family rooms there the little house let me know it is a room uh, let's add something else that uh, causes conflict in my home and that's uh, a resource and that's the PlayStation 3. Uh, all, everybody wants to play it. There's fights over who gets to play when and how much time and whether it's fair or not. So I might want to use my calendar uh, program to uh, help me make that happen. So I'm going to put the PlayStation 3 in here. Again, I'm going to leave it as automatically. And again, I'm going to put myself as the delegate because I want to be the one in charge. Uh, of all that stuff so my kids don't fight and, and kill each other. So I'm going to add that now to uh, the list of things and now you see that that's a resource. So I've got those two things ready to go that I can use in my calendaring program. So all I need to do now is start the service. So let me click this to on and again it's going to start churning down here. We know when that wheel's spinning we don't do anything. We just wait for the server to do what it's got to do. We want to make that disappear. It's going to start the server. It's also going to um, you know, create a profile manager profile which I'll show you in a minute and you can see it's writing that right now and you can see on the side here all of a sudden now the, uh, the green dot came on and that means our, our service is running. Again server isn't done yet because it's still churning down here and we're going to wait. Now it's disappeared. So it is done. And let me show, the, show you what it means on the profile manager when it says writing profile. If you just click profile manager, you'll notice now a calendar is showing up. Now why this is neat and the reason I'm adding all these services now is you'll notice it falls under the default configuration profile, settings for everyone, which means that I can push these settings to all the clients and computers that are connected to my server and all they got to do when they log in is accept the profile, log in and all of their stuff will be there and it'll configure their computers for them. It's a really neat deal. I've got to show you how this works individually first though um, so that you can see how these work but then we'll eventually get to showing you how you manage devices and how you can make that work. So anyways, now we are all set. I'm going to click back on iCal over here. And now what we've got to do is we've got to say, how do we get this iCal server working now on our other computers? So to do that, what we're going to do is go to System Preferences. And we're going to go to Contacts and Mail Contacts and Calendars. And as you can see, I, I don't have my server up here. Uh, a little tip for you, if you already configured address book and you show, you're showing your server over here, it won't show the new iCal change that just happened. Uh, I think it's a bug in server. Uh, what I did is just deleted the, the uh, account on the side here and just re-added it and then the service showed up. Uh, I just want to let you know that in case you hit that bump and you're wondering what's going on. So we click other and we're going to add a Mac OS X server account. We click create. There's my server, so I just click it here. Uh, again, it works on my server to be able to just click the word server to make it happen uh, with the local name. When you're doing clients, you've got to put the full server address in there, like server.joblow.com, whatever it is. I'm going to click continue. Now I've just got to type in all of my uh, credentials so that it will, it will let me in. And let me just do that uh, real quick here. I click set up. It's going to validate me. There's my two services ready to go. I click Add Account, and now it's going to go out and figure out how to do these accounts. Now, one of the things that may happen to you is you may get an error message that pops up. Uh, this happens to some people where it says, "Hey, I can't trust the the certificate. I, I don't, you know, it's not a signed certificate. It's from the server, and I don't think I can trust it." What you want to do is you want to click uh, Approve and to always trust the certificate. There's a little triangle that says Details. You want to click Always Trust the Certificate and then you'll never have that problem. It will go through and work and, and you'll be fine. So as you can see now, everything is configured. Over here it says Contacts and Calendars. So I am uh, ready to go. Everything is in good shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this down here. And let's go take a look at our calendar and see how it works in iCal. So here is iCal. Uh, pop that up so we can take a look at it. And uh, now, what you'll notice on the calendars up here, I've got a number of calendars that are uh, operating for me. I don't have them checked on, but you notice down here now it says Mac OS X Server, and it shows my calendar. So everything is up, is up and running, and my calendar is going to be in yellow. Now, uh, I had created this particular uh, invite. I'm just going to create another one for the sake of uh, doing our 
experiment here. So I'm going to say watch TV on let's say uh, let's say Tuesday, and we're going to do it at 7 p.m. on Tuesday. Okay, quick event. So what it's going to do is it adds it over here. Now it defaulted to my other calendar. So what I'm going to do is make it my Mac server calendar, and I'm going to shut off all these other calendars that happen to want to come up so it makes it cleaner. And so I've got Watch TV. I've got it on the right calendar. Now if you look here I can add invitees, right? So I'm going to invite my son Dylan uh, you know, to join me uh, in watching this. And what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to take over the living room. Okay, we're going to, we're going to take over the, the we're going to, well, actually we're going to take over the PlayStation. It's PlayStation 3. We're going to take over that together. So he and I are going to play PlayStation together. All right, we're going to make that happen. Now, uh, if we wanted to, we could put living room up here to show the room that we're in. Okay, we can we can put that up here as well if we wanted to make that uh, a part of what we do. And uh, but I've got that. Everything's ready to go here. So I said, Dylan, PlayStation 3. I've got the invite out. Now I'm just going to click send. Okay, so now that has been sent off, and you you can tell here by looking. It shows that I've got a person involved, and I've got some other resource involved. Little question mark there, uh, and so it's on my calendar now. So now what I want to do is let's go over to my son's computer. I've got a screen share uh, going, and let's see what he sees on his end, and let's see if that thing got sent uh, or not, and if it's there. So here's my son's calendar uh, over on a on a screen share. And you'll notice he's got his inbox here. It, this is where the invites will go when, when we invite him to things. I'm just going to click on that. And you'll notice I sent him an invite to watch TV on Wednesday. That was before. But here's the one that I just sent him, right, to watch TV uh, on the 24th at 7 p.m. Now, he can, uh, he can accept that. So let's just say he says, yes, I'm, I'm, going, I'm going to accept that. All right? And he can accept this other one on Wednesday as well. Okay? So now for him, look, he's got he's accepted this. Everything's good here. If we go to the 24th, which is on a Tuesday, there's my uh, invitation to him. If we uh, click on it to take a look at it, you can see that he and I are going to be hanging out together and we are taking the uh, PlayStation 2 over and we're doing it in the living room. So we've got that all set up. Uh, he says that he's accepted it. He can change his mind later if he wants to. He can change it to maybe or decide to decline if he finds something better he wants to do. Um, but uh, other than that, everything is set to go. And we're in good shape. And so you can see how you can reserve those types of things. Now, if you look, if, uh, if I go, let me just pop this down for a second. I'm going to pop the screen share down. And I'm coming into here. And I've got... Uh, this where it says, hey, Dylan says we're good to watch TV. So I can say, okay, great. So now I know that I'm good watching TV with Dylan, and he's in, and he wants to do it with me. Now, let's just, uh, if you take a look at it, if anybody tries now to book the PlayStation 3 during that time, it's going to say, hey, time out, guys. It's already been taken, and it's going to throw a flag up so that someone else can't come in and try to take the time. Not only that, but if we do this on a shared calendar, we can see what everybody's doing. So let me show you for a second, again, just like I did in content, uh, in the address book, uh, the two options for how you can set up these calendars. Because right now, how I have it set up, Dylan has his own calendar and I have my own calendar. And you notice that, right? Because this one's yellow uh, in our scheme and his is purple. Part of that is just because he has more colors than I do because mine are taken. But we're, we're on different calendars. Dylan has his own and I have my own. So if you want, ever wanted to do joint calendars, we would do the exact same uh, thing that we did with our um, address book. You'd come into your users, you would go and create a new user, and you would call it shared calendar. Okay, And then you would type in an account name, an email address, a password, you'd verify it. And then basically everybody then would sub subscribe to that shared calendar and then we could all edit off of one calendar together instead of having each other's different calendars and inviting each other across. So whichever way you would prefer to do, that's the way you can make it happen, but there are multiple ways to set up these calendars. Well, that's all I have for you today. Hopefully that was helpful in you getting started with uh, the Cal iCal server. Uh, it's really a great tool to have on Lion Server. And again, it brings some of the corporate world into the home and gives you some practical ways that you might be able to use it. So again, that's all I have for today. I'll be back at you with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.